Welcome back to Denise Peterson Refuse at the Cove, and I'm having the pleasure to speak with Suzanne Conrad, who is the founder of the Hook Drug Museum of North America, and we were just talking about this incredible museum right in our backyards and how fortunate we are to have it, and Suzanne and I were going over a marvelous story about how she brought 50 women together to be able to teach the art of rug hooking to younger people so we could get an interest in the younger generation with this wonderful craft. So Suzanne, I know that you got 50 women together just going around talking to people and finding out where these women are and the ones who had the skill to do the rug hooking. What was the next step like getting a, I know you would have to have a pattern to teach with. Well, that's uh, when it came to a part of the history of how the museum started. There was a, in between 1972 to 1950, there was a, a factory in New Glasgow where it was called the uh, Garrett by the Bridge. They had been closed in 72 and Ed McCarter had bought the building and had some storage in the basement where he kept uh, some of the uh, patterns and the uh, stencils. And so one day, Shu and I, we went to visit the basement, which had been visited by many, many, many rogues occurs before us but there was still some uh, some patterns left over and some different uh, artifacts so we bought everything that was left uh, we bought uh, as well all the uh, printing machines that they used to do the uh, patterns and everything that was left that we could uh, help to could help us to tell the story of how the pattern was made and as well they were the, the, the biggest uh, pattern factory in the world at the Isn't time, that yes. So it's uh, and it was right here in 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 our uh, Nova Scotia. I didn't know that. And, I and so many pe- so many so many people do not wow. know that, and it is important because it's a part of our history. So we um, we display in the museum all those uh, beautiful artifacts and tell the history. But that's from there that we had bought some patterns and uh, we designed, we transferred them to Burlap and a teacher, the 50 teachers were uh, hooking one of the uh, Garrett patterns and the student, their 50 students were doing uh, something on their own. So that yeah, so that's that's a very made a very interesting uh, display and, and as, uh, it's nice that we have all that and at the same time we, we, we preserve all those patterns at the museum. So you're, so you're they are creating in, history. We, also, uh, with yes, the, you're showing uh, the, history the history of the rug hooking and how beautiful that is. And then you have these 50 ladies and their students uh, rug hooking and creating history right here yes, exactly. in, in Hubbard's yes. area. Yeah. Wow. So that was uh, quite interesting to, to uh, put that together. And I have to tell our listeners, please go visit this museum because it is absolutely incredible. You'll walk out of the door saying, wow, is in that and I've used the word I think wow about six times in this show tonight because that's all I can say to describe what the experience is and how fortunate we are to have a museum of such high standards and the quality of the workmanship that you see in the museum and the work that the volunteers that that Suzanne well, has and the work that Hugh has done over the years. Well, we're very fortunate to have volunteers that put their heart into it. We have a nice group. We have a nice board. It's a not-for-profit society and it's operated by a board of directors and so it's very interesting to try to find more volunteers if anybody in the area wish to volunteer at the and museum. it is a wonderful organization mm-hmm. I have to tell you to volunteer and we what ha- you would learn is a, a really uh, amazing because you learn to work with people you were you get so much energy f- because everybody on your board and your volunteers wants this to work in our community and it has it is a success story and you have many different activities events and you do you bring in uh, rug hookers 
from different parts of the world. So I want you to let us know what are your plans uh, for this for, season. For this Come season, up. in the um, exhibit that we have for this uh, summer, we have the tarot cards. This is something oh, not to cards. miss. You will be so, so, so impressed to see those rugs. They are tapestry, really, and three-dimensional. So they really grace our, our walls. And I think everybody that who comes here is so, so impressed. They cannot believe because yeah, you can spend hours just looking at those at this uh, exhibit. We have, as well, every year, we have uh, Artist of the Year. Yes. And we have uh, Kay uh, Lewis from so you bring Nova the, Scotia. So you bring the artist's work to the museum? Yes. And we have the other another artist as well from New Brunswick. There's uh, Kate Thornhill. And we have Artists the Wall. Artists the Wall, it's, a, it's an exhibit that is done uh, biannual by the Nova Scotia group. So we have that again this year. And we have a big display of Maud Lewis as well. Oh, that fits so perfect this is, with yes, the new and we do movie sell the pa- We do sell the Maud Lewis patterns. Well, there's right. wow again. See, I can't yeah, help myself yes. to saying this. <laughs> I've been to the museum a number of times, and I have to tell you, it is Yes. We are just so fortunate. It's hard to describe except for saying wow. So I'm going to let you continue. <laughs> we do um, many workshops. So this year, if you are interested in taking a workshop, I would uh, suggest that you go on our website at www.com. Hookrug Museum Nova Scotia.org. And so you'll be able to see all the programs and uh, all the yes. programs and the cost and uh, the hookins. Yeah. We have two hookins and maybe another one planned for this summer. And the hookins, don't, don't people all get together? Yeah, and they're the all people, in the room exactly. When they come, it's, each yes. other. It's, it's a place to socialize for a day, and we have uh, wonderful uh, lunches prepared, prepared by uh, our um, Linda McCrow. Uh, She's uh, our function coordinator, and with our volunteers as well, and most of us do a little bit of cooking as well for it. So it's, um, it's a very, very nice, pleasant day to, to come to. I know I've heard people uh, talk about it that have participated, and they yes. say it, it is a great time. <clears throat> doesn't matter what your learning level is because no because you come in and you're on your own you do your own thing and so people will help you if you need that and, and you learn from each other you know when you're in a group like that when you go in a in a hook and it's mostly the camaraderie and and looking what other people are doing and and learning from others some tricks yes so it's yes. it's mostly a, a, a gathering too well i'd like to go back to the tarot cards and have you tell us where is that coming from uh, one of our directors from yeah. the the state, uh, Michelle Micarini is uh, the one that organized it, and it's uh, it's all different people that uh, hook each one hook uh, one of the ta- the the, car- the tarot card. Yeah. It's uh, ju- the display just arrived. Michelle uh, sent it from United States uh, last week, and I just we just put it on display this uh, this week, so it's ready to to be shown. And it's believe me, it's impressive. You should not miss that. And so, people that are really into the rug hooking, like the the professionals types, and the people that really follow it closely, would know about the tarot cards. Is that that would a very uh, well known or famous oh yes, oh uh, yes, it is, it is, it is, yeah, and it is an exhibit that um, uh, was done in order to be a travel exhibit so it does travel but we are fortunate to have it for the summer so we have it until the mid-october so which is uh, very good and i know that uh, when i have visited the museum that there's many pieces that you well mostly all of them when you look at them they have a story behind them Yes. That, you know, it takes time to go through the museum. So you want to make sure you give yourself At time. At least a to... couple. Uh, <laughs> some people stay uh, the full day, depending uh, of your interest. But uh, I would say that figure out uh, no less than a couple of hours. I totally agree and with And after you. two yes, hours, yes. you haven't seen half of it. <laughs> I know. Yes. And, and then, like I said, it's like a going into a storybook because yeah. each of those rugs have a story. Yeah. And where they came from, I, I think that we are so fortunate fortunate to have a museum like this mm-hmm. in, in in our own communities and that's why we wanted to talk about it this mm-hmm. evening we wanted to make sure people know about it and they take the opportunity to visit and, mm-hmm. and then tell others well what is important too and that I, I really want to do every year and I started to 
to the Etoile from the beginning is that it's not a stagnant museum. So when you come one year, you you can be assured that besides some of uh, historical rug or the heritage rugs, some have been re- some are replaced, but others are there. Mostly, you will see the the, the same one. But I'm trying to change some There's of them something as some new something yes. new comes, some donation comes, then we can uh, replace mm-hmm. them. But uh, in the uh, contemporary, all the exhibits are changed completely every year. So every time you come back, you see something new. And that's what's so wonderful about the museum, because yeah. uh, like you said, it's not a stagnant museum. Exactly. What, and once you went, you don't need to go back. Here, you do need to go back. You do. Need, yeah, exactly. Yes. I not want people to come <laughs> back. <laughs> and I know being a nonprofit, and it's a large building, and all the work and the, how beautiful it's inside, and what you've had to do to renovate the building. You've had to do a lot of fundraising, which is really challenging. And so these fundraising days of, is an important part, isn't it? It is, because in these days of age, especially when we you start with something like a rug or cane right from the beginning, well, people are easy to donate to something that they know, like animal or, or <laughs> medicine or so, health yes, or but something this is like different. that. But suddenly you come with, yeah. and, and at the time, especially when we started there was no building there was nothing there was my husband and I and an idea that it had to be done and our persistence in in doing it really did pay uh, because we are at the point where we are today but uh, we had to give our full time uh, and that's uh, why your story should be heard because it was you and Hugh and you knew that you had this just passion to make sure that people had an opportunity to see the beautiful artwork of rug hook and the history behind it and it's a big history for us in our area and for you to be able to create what you created in this huge building that when you go inside it's just it's magical but you see the thing is we felt both of us at the stage of our life that it was payback time we had been very fortunate we had a great life I had a great life we were very uh, proud of our life the way we each one uh, had very successful careers and lovely family, so it was time to pay back. And we decided to spend uh, some of our money and time and effort to to try to preserve something that we felt should be preserved. Because when you think of the pioneer when they arrive in Canada, and they had nothing, absolutely nothing. Mm. And the only way that they could survive and be warm, uh, it was really to grow their own flax and their their own uh, f- their, their own uh, way of making rugs was uh, growing the flax seed. And after um, getting it ready to put the fabric and, and hook them, they used sheep and they had no clothes because they arrived in Canada with a dress and for Sunday and a dress to work in the house. So they have to find a way that they would have fabric so they were uh, hooking with uh, the piece of uh, flax or linen that they would make and unwinding some of them to hook it back into their backing so it's quite interesting and we showed that at the museum well the history is so fascinating exactly absolutely yeah. fascinating yeah. and to think that people were able to do that and how intelligent yes. they were to be able to make sure that they could survive and this is what they had yeah. to do to survive and I feel I feel very proud that I have been able to give back a little bit to society that has been so good to me and to give back to our ancestors that uh, worked so hard. And thanks to them, they, we, <laughs> we're here today. Well, and, Suzanne, uh, we are so fortunate that we have you in our community, that you and Hugh together as partners did this, opened a North American recognized internationally museum right here for us to see and for the tourists to come and enjoy. It is certainly a story that we want people to know about and to come visit the museum. And in closing, when are you open? In May, we're open every weekend. Starting in June, we're open 10 to 5 every day, seven days a week, till mid-October. Well, please, listeners, take the time to go. Take fr- your neighbors, take your friends, any family that's visiting, because when you walk in those doors, once again, as I said many 
times this evening, you're going to say, wow, just wow. And I want to thank Suzanne for being here this evening and letting us all know about the history, a little bit of that on rug hooking, what we have in our community, and that we have a North American international high standard fabulous rug museum that no one should miss. Thank you, Suzanne. Thank you very much, uh, Denise. It was my pleasure to be here with you tonight. Take care. This is Denise Peterson, Ray Fuse at the Cove. Thank you. Have a wonderful (laughs) evening.